What's up guys, it's Jeff Chan from MMA Shredded and in this video I'll be comparing the calf kick to the thigh kick. I'll be giving my opinion on which kick causes more damage, when you should kick the calf versus the thigh, which target is more effective, which kick is easier to check, which kick you should throw depending on your opponent's stance, and finally, which kick is longer, essentially which kick is safer to throw. Now before we get started, I'm super excited to share with you my 50 heavy bag technique and conditioning program. That's right. This program consists of 50 heavy bag workouts that focuses on developing explosive power, speed, balance, cardio, rhythm, flow, and fluidity in your striking, while sharpening your technique and learning my full strike system from basic to advanced. Each round includes a detailed technique breakdown followed by the follow-along workout in both video and audio format. You'll be learning more than just offensive combinations, but footwork, head movement, counters, fakes, feints, setups, and more. You'll never get bored as you can work out three times a week for four months without repeating the same workout. You can solo train by popping in the audio clips to your headphones and train on a heavy bag at the gym, or if you have your own heavy bag, you can blast the video on a large screen TV to follow. For more information, check out the link in the description box below. So which target causes more damage? In my humble opinion, I would give a point to the calf over the thigh on this one. I believe kicking the calf is more effective because getting kicked in the calf definitely hurts more than the thigh. Unlike the thigh where you can condition your thigh and increase your pain tolerance over time, you can't really condition your calf. It's too small of a muscle. If you land a few solid calf kicks, you can really immobilize your opponent's leg. On the other hand, you can condition your thigh naturally through sparring to the point where I actually enjoy being kicked in the thigh, of course, until it eventually builds up too much and hurts. How about when you should kick the calf versus when you should kick the thigh? So if you like to play the in and out game, I would recommend kicking the thigh. I love exploding into attack and exiting out to evade the counter attack. You can see that I will enter with punches and exit off by using the double step low kick to the thigh, creating enough distance to defend a counter punch or a combination of counter punches. Usually the double step low kick gets me so far away from my opponent that they don't even bother chasing me. But if they do, I can back away with the long guard as you already saw. Or you can use this as a way to bait your opponent and into a counter. Here I baited my opponent and intercepted him with a lead body kick. And recently I've been trying to bait my opponent into the inside foot sweep. Here a rear body kick. And over here. I did the same thing, I baited him but intercepted him with a lead teep. And my favorite one here against guys who rush forward extremely aggressively, which is to shoot for a double leg takedown. The more distance I create, the more eager my opponent will rush forward to try to get me back, and the easier the double leg takedown becomes because I just change levels and go underneath their legs, going with their momentum. And if my opponent does not chase me, well, I scored my point and now I'm back on the outside where I want to be. On the other hand, you can't double step low kick to the calf because if you do, you just end up kicking your opponent's shin. So again, the double step low kick only works on the thigh. So for this reason, I give the point to the thigh. So which target is more effective? As mentioned earlier, you can condition your thigh over time through training and just eating a lot of low kicks. A common counter to the thigh kick is to brace for the kick by intentionally eating the kick and throwing that cross down the middle or loading up for that left hook. But if you land a solid calf kick, there's a good chance it turns into a foot sweep, sweeping them to the ground and not allowing your opponent to counterattack. Of course, nothing is 100%. If your opponent does not fall to the ground, it will often at least off balance them, where you can follow up with any strike in the book. For example, you can disrupt your opponent with the calf kick and throw the jab. You can also throw the cross, a left hook, body kick. You can follow up with the lead high kick. You can also follow up with the rear high kick and even a uppercut. Now what happens if you kick at the same time as your opponent? So if you kicked your opponent's calf at the same time they kicked you in the leg, body or head, it is very likely you would sweep your opponent. Whereas if you kick the thigh at the same time your opponent kicked you, they would stay balanced. How about which kick is easier to check? The calf kick is slightly easier to check as you don't need to lift your checking leg as high, if at all. All you need to do to check a calf kick is to churn your shin 45 degrees. Whereas the thigh kick, you need to lift your shin or knee to the height of the thigh. 
I give a point to the thigh kick on this one, meaning it is slightly easier to land a thigh kick than it is to land a calf kick. So are you up against a traditional style Muay Thai fighter where their weight is always on their back leg and light on their lead leg? You already know that their first line of defense to defending low kicks is to check. So I would kick the thigh. This is why we see calf kicks thrown a lot less in Muay Thai fights. So what if you are up against a boxer, a karate fighter, an MMA fighter, or any style that has more of a bladed and wide stance where their weight is evenly distributed on both legs or more onto the lead leg? In this case, you want to kick the calf. With all that weight on that front leg, it will be very difficult for them to lift their leg to check. And as we already discussed at the beginning, if you can land a low kick, go for the calf as it is more effective. Finally, which kick is longer? With thigh kicks, I like to point my toes downwards like I'm doing ballet, giving my low kick whip-like damage, more recoil and more reach. On the other hand, I would recommend kicking the calf with your toes flexed upwards so you can hook and tug the calf and turn it into a foot sweep, which makes the kick shorter. A longer kick is better in my opinion because it allows you to be further away from your opponent and less likely to get hit. A lot of people like to comment saying you will break your foot if you kick with the instep, yet we see the best Muay Thai fighters like Sanchai and Lerzilla not only kick with the instep, but they both teach it that way as seen in their seminars. After hearing my breakdown on the calf and thigh kicks, do you like the idea of calf kicking or thigh kicking more? Which are you going to implement more into your sparring? Let me know in the comments below. And as usual guys, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe as well as hit that notification button so you get a notification when a new video comes out.